Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you the best dinos to tame on Extinction. Now, as always, my disclaimer, there may well be dinos that you can bring over from other maps that will be better for Extinction, but I'm keeping this list just to the dinos that you can tame on Extinction itself. Extinction is one of my favourite maps and has some of the best dinos to offer, so I'm excited for this one. As always, guys, thank you so much for the continued support. We're growing much faster than I ever thought we would, and I'm extremely grateful for that, so thank you so much. Really hope you guys enjoy this video, and let's get into it. Number one. So for our first spot on this list, I've done a dino that's very effective if you're gonna use him for the right ways. And that is the gas bag. So straight off the bat, you can see that these guys have amazing weight. This was a max level tame and it's come up with 5,000 weight just from standard. So you can see it can hold a lot of weight. Now, you can also give them quite a lot of health and like very few dinos on the game, it's wise to level up their oxygen. So using oxygen, you can take in air and make the gas bag blow up. Now, when a gas bag's blown up, you can then basically fly on it. It's a little bit awkward to control to start with, but once you get the hang of it, they're actually pretty quick. A lot of the time they'll keep up with things like Tyranodons, they're just not as agile. As you can see, whilst flying around, instead of using stamina, it will actually use oxygen, or gas as it says at the bottom of the screen. I suppose it's not called an oxygen bag. But anyway, their high weight, as well as decent speed and maneuverability, can make them very effective if you use them in the right way. On Extinction, for example, if you just complete yourself an OSD, a lot of the items you're gonna get from that can be very heavy, and you only get a couple of minutes to pick up these items. So items can often despawn before you get to pick them up. However, with a gas bag, you can just load that up and get away quick. Similarly, if you've just raided someone and you need something to fill up with loads of weight, the gas bag is going to be great for that. You need to be very careful that you don't let your gas bag run out of oxygen, however, because if it runs out of oxygen and falls, it will take a lot of full damage. And if it's low health, it's going to die. On top of this, when a gas bag's blown up, it will have an 80% damage reduction, and you can also place saddles on them. That's insane. That makes these guys one of the best soakers in the game if you know how to use them properly. The fact that they can fly also makes it the best soaker for hard to reach places. And if you're good at using a gas bag, you'll be surprised the kind of bases you can raid with just one of them. Number two. Now, every time one of these guys show up, I say it, these are my favorite dino in the game. So the way I see it, there's two decent ways to build a Managama in terms of its levels. So if I've got a low level one, I'll put most of its level ups into stamina and a little bit of health for it. This makes it probably the best way to get around the map on Extinction, and you can still freeze things if you need to get away, but they're a lot more effective if you can get yourself a high level one with a good melee. A decent leveled Managama, or especially a bread and imprinted one, will take on almost anything you throw on it on the map or even in the game. They're so fun to use due to their ice attack, and if you're not someone who likes confrontation on the game, these guys are great because a lot of people won't even come near you because of how good they are, and if you have to, you can just freeze something and run away. Speaking of running away, Yep, these guys are extremely fast, and yep, they can pretty much fly. Once you get the hang of using these guys, they're extremely fast. They're also very agile, and they're surprisingly easy to use. The reason I said I'd always give them a lot of stamina is because when you start jumping around, if you're not careful, you're going to use up that stamina very quickly. And if you're in PvP with someone on a flyer, and your Managama runs out of stamina, that's when you're going to start to have problems. Quick trick with Managamas, if you're sitting on it, it will take a long time to regain stamina. But on these guys, if you jump off, they'll regain stamina a lot quicker. You can also hide under their front wing, and it will semi-protect you from most things. As soon as it's regained stamina, which will be just a few seconds, you can then get back on it, and you're ready to go. Number three. Although not technically a tame, an enforcer is definitely a dino that you can have for yourself. Instead of taming them, you can craft them in replicators or in city terminals. The best way to get the blueprint to craft an enforcer is to kill a wild one. When you kill it, it will leave behind a blueprint, of which you can craft one. The quality of the blueprint corresponds with the level of the enforcer that you killed. So let's talk about these guys. We'll start with the bad points, and that is that they don't have a lot of health. Now, on to the good stuff. These guys can teleport very short distances, and although it doesn't seem effective at all, it's one of those that can be useful whilst you're fighting something. It can allow you to relocate and give you a couple of seconds time. These guys, although a little bit buggy, can also climb vertical walls and can even walk upside down on ceilings and things. A lot more effective if you want to travel high areas in the sanctuary. Now, the main reason they're on this list, although not super strong normally, damage an enforcer deals to a corrupt creature is times by four. That means if you can get yourself a couple of high level enforcers, give them a little bit of health and give them a lot of melee, they will absolutely shred through corrupt creatures. This makes them extremely effective for blue, yellow, and maybe even red OSDs. Due to their low health, I definitely wouldn't use them for the hardest OSDs, but if you want to farm a couple of the easy ones, these guys are your best bet. 
although they can sometimes be a little bit pricey to craft. Number 4 Now I love these guys. The Velonosaurs are basically living machine guns. That's the best way to put them. They can be used how I'm using them here. However, using them like this drains a lot of stamina, so you need to have a high stamina one if you're gonna do this. Only real times I might use it for this is maybe for a raid defense as like a last ditch thing, or maybe to help with certain bosses. These guys are actually most effective and most used when they're not mounted. So if you set them to aggressive and enable turret mode, these guys will work as a turret to anything in sight. Now the reason for this is to put them in your base and you've basically got yourself a free turret. Sure, they can be shot and killed, but this just slows people down and can deal a lot of damage. Their spikes will also ground flyers, which makes it very frustrating if someone's trying to raid you. At the very least, if you're online and away from your base and one of these guys gets killed, it's gonna notify you. Number five. For this spot, we have the Snow Owl. Another very popular choice, especially when it comes to PvP. So just off the bat for a small flyer, these guys have decent health, they have decent stamina, and they're pretty strong. If you swoop down on them, they'll have a similar animation to a griffin, although nowhere near as fast. But until you can get yourself a Managama, these guys are going to be your fastest choice of getting around on the map. Even if you don't want to use them for flying around, you should always have one in your base, and they're one of the most important dinos to add to your collection. The secondary attack if you like, will freeze the owl, the rider and anything in close range to it. Whilst it's frozen, it will heal up anything that is frozen. It's not a super fast heal, but in just a minute or two, you can have almost anything healed up. So they're great to just have at the entrance of your base, so when you come back on whatever you're on, you can just top up its health quick so it's ready to go out the next time. Now if you know how to use these, they can be very effective for PvP if you're against something on the ground. If you swoop directly to the floor, for a few seconds it will slow down anything around it. This gives you enough time to bowler someone or something, or shoot at it, whatever you want to do. I mean, couple this with some good melee damage on your owl, and you can kill it with your owl. Number 6. Now, these guys aren't just the cutest little things. Sagatchas are found on the sunken forest in Extinction, and they're a passive tame, so they're very easy to get with just some stone, so you can have one very early on. Now, the good thing about these guys, once you've tamed them, you'll see that they'll have a production option. Now, this production option will passively allow them to make the option that you've chosen, as long as it's eating things. So, in effect, it will eat, and then shite out the item that you've asked for. Now, they like to eat things like war maps. It's a great choice, especially as they're cheap. And there are actual gacha farms out there if you want to look them up. The list of things that your gacha can produce is kind of down to luck. If your gacha can't produce something that you want, it's pretty much useless and you need to get yourself another one. As you can see, after just a few minutes, your gacha is going to be pouring out loads of things. And I got very lucky with this one, it gives black pearls. So you can find one that will passively give you black pearls or silica pearls or anything you want like that then you're never going to need to go out and harvest this item. They also have the chance to drop higher tier crystals. This one dropped two, and it gave me decent things for early to mid game. That's going to wrap up for this video, guys. As always, I really hope it's helped some of you out. If it has helped you out, please leave a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. It's a nice place to be. I have so many guys like this on my channel now, so go check them out if there's anything you want to learn. But for now, this has been the best dance to tame on Extinction. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.